Welcome, friends, to worship from St. John United Church of Christ in Louisville, Kentucky. We're so happy to have you worship with us in this way again this morning, uh, a way that we will continue to be worshiping for several more weeks at least. We'll keep you apprised of any changes that may be coming up in the weeks ahead, but we're glad that, that you can join us this way, whether you're worshiping with us live or, or watching later on glad that you're here. As we have been for the last few weeks, we'll be sharing in Holy Communion later on during our service. So if you haven't already uh, taken time to go to your kitchen or wherever you need to go to gather elements to participate with us in that, I encourage you to, to go ahead and do so. If you have bread and wine or bread and juice, or as I've said before, milk and cookies, whatever you with us as we share in a time of communion together. It's a beautiful morning here in Louisville this morning, uh, a beautiful weekend. I know everyone was thinking yesterday that it would have been a, a gorgeous day to have, uh, to have gone to the Derby or, or had Derby parties, but that's put off as, as is many other things in our lives right now, but that doesn't mean that, that life is not Good Shepherd, who offers us abundant life. Let us worship God in the name of the one who leads us by still waters and restores our souls. Let us worship God in the name of the one who prepares a banquet for us and fills our cup to overflowing. Let's pray. Incarnate God, you are the one who comes to us Jesus Christ. Holy One, you are the one who comes to us in the Holy Spirit. Sovereign of earth and heaven, you are the one who calls us to recognize you today and every day as holy mystery. So gather our hearts and minds this day, kindle our awareness of your presence with us even now. Move in our spirits that we would worship you in awe and in wonder. In all your holy names, amen. Well, this morning, I would like to share with you here two scripture passages, uh, one right after the other, because I'm going to reference both uh, in, in the message this morning. The first passage comes from the book of Acts in the New Testament chapter 2, which is a chapter devoted largely to talking about the beginnings of the church and what those early believers did. So from Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the added to their number those who were being saved. And then this morning's gospel reading comes from the gospel of John chapter 10. Jesus is speaking here, and at the beginning of that chapter, he says, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The 
gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow the stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them. They did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Gracious God, thank you for time to come together in whatever way we are doing that right now. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for your word to us. Help us to open our minds and our spirits that we might receive all that you have for us this day. Through Christ our Lord. things that I've been doing over these past weeks since we have been limiting our worship experience to, to online and, and otherwise limiting other non-essential activities, not only here at the church, but in our lives in general. One of those things that, that I've been doing is, is making phone calls to people who are part of our St. John community of faith particularly calling those who are farther along in the race of life. Calling just to, to check in, to maintain contact, to let them know that we're thinking of them and praying for them. But as time has passed over these weeks, I've noticed a bit of a change. Early on, people were positive, they, they missed us being getting to be together, but they understood why we, why we couldn't and believed it was the right thing to do, but generally were upbeat and, and positive. But earlier this week, as I was making some of those phone calls, talking to some of those same people, I, I could, could hear a change in their voices. They, they still understood why we're doing what we're doing and believe that it's the wise thing to do and it's what we need to, to do. But I can also hear a tinge of weariness. The situation is, is wearing on them. It's, it's wearing on us. We're, we're growing tired longing to, to see that light at the end of the tunnel. Well, with that in mind, <clears throat> I think if you were to, to ask 100 people, just go up to, to someone or speak to them on the phone, whatever the case, and just say, how's life? My guess is that that very few, if any, would answer that question by saying, abundant. Now, I, I expect quite a few, if you said, how's life? They'd say, okay, or it's all right, or the ever popular, fine. And whether or not they were being totally honest in saying that is, a, is another thing. Some might be a little more honest. They might say, well, you know, I'm tired. Or perhaps, well, to tell you the truth, I'm feeling a little anxious or, or fearful. Some might simply say, you know, I'm, I'm just feeling a little off. 
None of these answers, however, sound like what we think of when we think of the word abundant. We think of abundant as, as, as plentiful or ample or, or overflowing. seeing our lives that way right now. We don't think of plentiful when we see empty shelves at the grocery store. We don't think ample when we can't go places, we can't be with people that we care about, including our church friends and family. And we don't think of our cups or our lives as overflowing when we can hardly tell one day from another anymore. So thinking about that, the two scripture passages this morning are kind of an interesting ju juxtaposition. The gospel reading, the second reading that, that I shared with you, gives us that word, abundant. Through the passage, the, the earlier part of the passage, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's using metaphors, and particularly the metaphor of, of the shepherd and the sheep and the, and the gate. But overall, he's, he's in that, emphasizing the love and care of the shepherd for the sheep. But at the end of that reading, after he has said those things, then he says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. There's no metaphor there. That's just a plain, direct, straightforward statement. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. There's two things about that that I want to highlight, that I want to point out. He he says have, present tense, not, not future. He says, I came that they may have life, but not something to look forward to. It's for this life, not just for the next. And the abundantly that he talked about, I want to make sure we understand that it had and has nothing to do with wealth or material possessions. It's, it's about a sense of, of fullness, of, of completeness, contentment. I'm trying to, to get a, a sense of how I might convey that. I, I was looking at several translations of that verse this week, and one in particular that I liked was from the New International Reader's version of the scriptures, and it says, I came so that they may have life. I want them to have it in the fullest possible way. You hear that? In the fullest possible way. Well, the other reading that, that I shared with you to begin was a, a description of the church really in its infancy. And it talks about the kinds of things that those first Christians did. That they, they spent time learning about the faith and, and praying and, and that they helped each other financially, sacrificially doing that for each other. And, and it described the, the spirit and the attitude with which they lived their lives, saying that, that they had glad and generous hearts. We're even told the impact that all of that had, that, that they were treated with goodwill by all the other people that were around them, and that, that the Lord added to their number each day. More and more people wanted to be a part of that. But the passage makes another point that's important but easy to miss. It says, all who believed together. They spent time together. They ate together. They learned 
together. They went to the temple together. They were being the church. They were experiencing abundant life, experiencing life in the fullest possible way. And a big part of that was in that they were together. I think that right now a lot of our weariness, a lot of our not feeling like our lives are abundant is because we are feeling acutely our separation, the fact that we are not together. I mean, let's face it, this is for churches strange and disorienting territory. Think of the ways that you have ever thought of church. Think of, of a church as a, a group of followers of Christ, or perhaps you thought of church as the place where a group of followers of Christ come together. For most of us, those are the primary ways, for some maybe the only ways, that we have ever experienced church. I mean, we call the people who are associated with a particular church a congregation, don't we? But are we still a congregation when we can't congregate. I know that many of us are struggling in many ways. Some of us are struggling financially. Many have been laid off or furloughed or at the very least had their hours of work reduced and thus their income reduced. Some of us are struggling emotionally from perhaps not being able to be with family members, from maybe just from a lack of, of human contact with family, friends, or, or whomever. And some of us are struggling emotionally just because of the uncertainty and the unpredictability and irregularity of, of our lives right now. And some of us are struggling spiritually struggling to, to find God in all of this, struggling to connect with God in the midst of our isolation. Let's admit it, it's, it's hard to imagine all of this as being life that is abundant. But friends, we, we can experience life in the fullest possible way if we put into practice what we've said that we believe as Christians, if we, if we live out the faith that has been given to us. In these last couple of months, we have had to become more flexible and more creative in order to do that and in order to do the things of the church, such as worship. We'll need to continue to do that. Even at that point down the road when, when we do begin having in-person worship again, we'll have to do things, some of the things differently than we have experienced them in the past. We'll need the flexibility to be creative so that we can continue to protect especially those most vulnerable. And all of that demands of us a continuing commitment. It's a commitment first to our faith and to each other. But ultimately, it's a commitment to love as Jesus loved, sacrificially, loving our neighbors, as ourselves. That really is why we're doing this and holding worship services this way. 
it's more about loving our neighbors than it is about about orders from from our state government or our city government although we we do want to honor those follow those the ultimate reason is because we love our neighbors and we want to protect them and one last thing of our lives in these days. Remember always that you are loved. Jesus spoke of, of being a shepherd, of being a shepherd who, who loves the sheep and who sacrifices for them. A shepherd who speaks lovingly to them, who guides them, provides for them and protects them, who is always with them. Those sheep to which he referred, well, that's, that's you and that's me. We are those whom Christ walks with and whom Christ loves. Doesn't that sound like abundance? To love and to be loved. We're used to other things, but at, at its essence, isn't that what we really need from life and long for from life? To love and to be loved. It's God's call it's God's promise. It's why Christ came. And so, remember that Jesus said, I came that they may have, that you may have life and to have it in the fullest possible way. So just love and receive. This morning, as we go to a time of prayer, I know that there are many, many things, many needs that are on your hearts, and I invite you, even as I am praying, to lift up your own prayers to God, because we are confident that because God loves us, God hears those prayers. Holy One, we continue this day to lift up in prayer those who have contracted COVID-19, whether they are at home or in the hospital. We pray for their strength and healing, and that in spite of their circumstances, they would sense your presence with them in a very real way. They would not feel alone. Likewise, we pray for those who work in health care, for doctors, nurses, for nurse practitioners, and for all the other medical staff and support staff members. Give them the strength that they need, the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual strength to do what they are being called upon to do. God also strengthen and comfort their families during this time. They too are being affected. God, we pray today for a greater sense of unity and oneness of spirit in our state and in our country. May a concern for the greater good outweigh concern for personal desires. May a willingness to sacrifice motivated by a love of neighbor 
overcome an inclination toward individualism. God of justice, we pray for a day when we would see an end to privilege for some and injustice, oppression, and lack of opportunity for others. We pray for the day when one's gender identity, sexual preference, race, or ethnicity will have no bearing on the opportunities one receives or the response of law enforcement. We pray, O oh God, for a just society and a just world. Loving God, we pray today for all who are struggling with their mental health. Current circumstances have been challenging for all of us, but they are especially difficult for any of us who already deal with mental health challenges. May they too be reminded of your healing presence with them daily, and may they find the comfort and strength that they need for each moment and each day. Help us all, O oh God, to seek you in every day to open our eyes to the wonders with which you surround us to experience afresh all the ways you express your love for us and as we walk with you help us to immerse ourselves in the abundant life you give god we offer this prayer in the name of christ who taught us to pray God, our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. For Holy Communion this morning, I invite you to lend Christ your table. Lend Christ your table, your bread, your cup, and your heart. We are one bread, one body, one cup of blessing. Though we are many throughout the earth, and this church community is scattered in your many kitchens, living rooms, I invite you to rest your hands lightly upon these elements that we set aside today to be a sacrament. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who believe in me shall never be thirsty. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took his authority as the Christ and offered the bread in thanksgiving and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, by the same authority, Jesus offered the cup in thanksgiving and said, Take, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, come Holy Spirit, come. Open our eyes to the mystery of Christ's presence. In these ordinary things, in these our ordinary lives, may they be for us the very essence of the living Christ in our midst. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Christ gives.
spirit of Christ, you have blessed our tables and our lives. May the eating of this bread give us courage to speak faith and act love, not only in church sanctuaries, but in your wondrous world. And may the drinking of this cup renew our hope, even in the midst of pandemic. Wrap your hopeful presence around all whose bodies, spirits, and hearts need healing. Let us become your compassion and safe refuge. Amen. I want to say thank you, first of all, to all of you who have been sending in or in some way offering your financial support to the ministry of St. John United Church of Christ. And as always, invite anyone who would like to do so uh, to, to help us to continue to share this message of hope and love from the corner of East Market and Clay Streets here in New Loop, just east of downtown Louisville. You can give through the Venmo app that you can get on your smartphone, or you can simply mail in a check uh, to our address here at the church as you would like. I do want to mention also uh, those of you who are a part of our, our church should have received your email newsletter by now, and there is information in there about a special offering that we're receiving at, at this time, an offering called One Great Hour of Sharing. Uh, it's, it's a favorite of mine simply because it is an offering that is not just uh, received at our church or in our uh, denomination, the United Church of Christ, but in multiple denominations. And every bit of the money that is given for this goes for disaster aid, places that have experienced tornadoes or flooding or uh, other natural disasters. And another part of it is used for development aid in places to, to do things like helping people become self-sufficient, self-sustaining, bringing clean drinking water, um, those kinds of things in various parts of the world. And if you would like to give to that offering, again, you can use those means, the Venmo app, or sending a check to the church. We would just ask you to notate in that, uh, either on Venmo or on your check, that it is for one great hour of sharing. In terms of uh, some other announcements, things about the life of the church, um, a thing that we've been doing for a few years now is a monthly meeting that we call Libations and Conversations, which we usually uh, do on a monthly basis on the first Tuesday evening of the month, and we meet at a local uh, establishment where a lot of times we, we share a meal, uh, but also a beverage of choice. Uh, and have some stimulating conversation on, on current topics of the day and how they intersect with our faith. Well, we didn't have that last month because of, of uh, social distancing, but uh, we're going to try it this month uh, by using uh, the Zoom application platform. And so if you would like to be a part of that, uh, we're, we'll be doing that this Tuesday, May 5th at 7 p.m. But in order for you to take part and participate, we need you to email our church office. And I think the email address is, is there uh, on this live stream. It's St. John with the word Saint spelled out, stjohnucc at gmail.com. Send us an email. Let us know that you would like to participate in libations and conversations on Tuesday night. And we'll respond with an email with a link to that, that uh, at seven o'clock Tuesday night, you just click on that link and it should take you uh, to the site and help you to uh, be able to participate in that. We look forward to, to seeing each other's faces and hearing our voices, even if we can't be in the same location together. Uh, along with that, other ways that you can be the church in these days, uh, out in front of our physical location here on East Market Street. We have a couple of, of boxes out there, a free little library where people can leave books or, or take books from, and you're welcome to 
to come and, and share in that, but there's also another one we call a blessing box. And uh, in that box we put uh, preferably single serve uh, items, non-perishable food items, and also personal hygiene items uh, that can be helpful to uh, those in need and, and especially uh, to our homeless friends uh, here in the downtown area. And if you would like to contribute things to that, you can, can drive down and, and put those items in there any time uh, that you would like to do so. Also, St. John is a member of Central Louisville Community Ministries, and if you'd like to see ways to, to support their efforts to, to help people during, during these difficult days, I would invite you to look them up on Facebook or uh, their web page. Again, it's Central Louisville Community Ministries. They do lots of good work, and it's a way that St. John is able to have a, a wider impact here in our community that we might otherwise be able to, to have. And so we invite your support. Well, as we continue in worship now, uh, we're gonna be sharing a video of Courtney and Eli Raines sharing uh, a song for us. It's called, This Is God's Wondrous World. And I think it just helps us to remember the abundance that is present all around us. I invite you to, to watch and listen as they share. Oh 
us remember that this week. The last verse of that song, which I'm not sure if you got or not, reminds us that though the wrong often seems strong, God is the ruler yet. So let your voices sing and let the heavens ring. Wherever you are, wherever you may go this week, be the church in the name of